My name is Jess Goddard and I'm the Chief Science Officer at Top Score. And my background is in all things water quality, affordability, and policy. And I'm here with my co-host, Sam. Um, I am the senior researcher at Top Score, and my background is in environmental analytical chemistry and water quality, wastewater, drinking water. So um, I'm excited to respond to some of your questions today about water quality and specifically about lead in your drinking water. And these came through up to us mostly through the Tap Score Instagram feed. So thanks for sending us those questions and we look forward to more. Um, so this first question comes from Jack and Jack's question is how much lead is bad? So again, we're focusing on lead in drinking water, but there are other sources you may have heard about like paint and dust. So in drinking water, it turns out any amount of lead is bad. So just to back up, lead is a heavy metal. Its impacts are pretty devastating. We focus on children because they're the most vulnerable to lead toxicity. And the primary impacts are developmental. Um, it impacts your brain, your nervous system. For children, there can be learning issues and um, impacts IQ things like that. So over time, any exposure to lead is bad. And this is supported by the uh, maximum contaminant level goal from the EPA. This is a public health based number only and it's zero. So yeah, I'll wrap that question up. Um, we have a question from Megan about the maximum guideline that EPA has for lead. Sam, do you think it's still necessary to take action if you find lead in water that's below the EPA level? Yeah, so uh, one important aspect of this question is that um, Megan mentions a maximum guideline. So I was talking about that ma uh, maximum contaminant level goal of zero, the MCLG. That's health-based only, and it's actually not regulatory, meaning it's not enforced. Um, it's just a guideline for us. The enforced guideline for lead, it's called an action level. Lead is regulated under, uh, it's called the lead and copper rule. So that action level is not zero. That's 15 parts per billion. And that action level is not based on health impacts of lead. It's actually just to indicate when there are issues in like the pipes and the distribution system. So um, you may find lead in your drinking water below that 15 parts per billion, but above zero. And yes, I still think it's necessary to take action, especially if there are children in your home. So Katie's question is, how can I find out if my feeder line is to the city water is lead? Um, and a feeder line, what Katie's referring to here is uh, known also as a lead service line or a service line. And we're wondering, is that service line lead? And the service line is the piping that connects the city water, large city water pipes that carry water all throughout the distribution system to the different homes, apartment buildings, offices, et cetera. So if you could imagine like a big, almost like river of water going underground in the city, there's all these little spigots coming off um, that go to homes. Those are service lines. So. Mm -hmm. Katie's question asking, is the service line lead, is really um, a challenging question to answer actually, but there are a couple of ways that we can um, determine this, but basically utilities and builders never have not historically taken really good account of which materials they use to build these lines. And since they're buried underground, we don't often know. So there are a couple things. One, if your home or apartment was built and connected to a water, water system after 1988, it's unlikely that the service lines were built with any lead because of the fact that they were banned. However, lead may still be in faucets, fixtures, or on premise, like in your house, piping that was done that's kind of separate from the connection to the water system. You know, as a good rule of thumb, after 1980, it's unlikely the service line was lead. A second thing to consider is the fact that there are actually multiple portions and uh, of a service line. 
So there can be a gooseneck that connects the water main to the service line, which can be made of lead, the service line itself, and other parts associated with it. Mm -hmm. um, many of these are underground, so it's really hard to tell. But one, one thing that you can do is the part of the service line that connects to your shutoff valve or the water meter is visible. You can take a um, coin and basically scratch the surface of it. There might be a little bit of buildup or corrosion. And if you get to a place where you see shiny silver um, and can actually test it with a, seeing if a magnet will stick to it, if it doesn't, that is most likely lead. Um, and so those are kind of two ways you can think about uh, whether or not your lines are lead short of digging up your property to figure out what's going on with the service line. Thanks, Jess. I, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about the service lines because I know that the regulations I mentioned, the lead and copper rule have, have changed a little bit. So could you give us a, a tiny bit of context about those um, about those changes and what's going on in states right now? Yeah, Katie's question is coming at a really, really appropriate moment in water policy because the Biden administration has allotted $15 billion to re remove and replace all lead service lines across the U.S. This is a huge effort because there's something like six and a half to 10 million service lines that are thought to be made of lead. But, but like we discussed, it's challenging to actually know that for sure. Um, and so from this money, basically, the administration is saying which states uh, have the most lead service lines and then it, based on estimates, and they're going to give money to those states. So for example, Florida has an estimated 1.2 million lead service lines, and they're going to be getting upwards of $255 million to replace these pipes. That's going to mean a lot of digging, uh, a lot of trucks coming into the cities and digging up lines and replacing them with things like PVC piping. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. I'm excited to jump into that a little more in our next video with the data that we collect from um, water tests that people run at their own taps. I, yeah, that's it for today. Um, thanks for sending us these questions, everyone. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching. Definitely send us more questions about water quality. You can leave your comments below or send them to us in any channel that Tap Score is active, Instagram, TikTok, um, on our website, and we'll leave links in the description. Thanks. Thanks.